use my loud voice. Um, so I'd just like to briefly add to Simon's comments that I can well recall reading in Amar's paper on the correlation of public code and the difficulty of determining whether things within it. Um, and also the first time I heard him speak, which was in fact on um, his later approach to um, quantum theory, um, where you do look at things operation and probabilities to get out of things, uh, experiments. Um, and so he definitely So today I'm going to talk about um, what's called ensemble steering, or what we like to call ensemble steering, and how it relates to the structure of general probabilistic theories. Um, I gave an introduction to this notion of general probabilistic theories yesterday, and John on uh, even more of an introduction the day before. Um, so I'll try to skip quickly over the background. Um, but let me just say, it's part of a general program where we're trying to characterize quantum classical theory within a broad framework of Rob Speckens likes to call the FOIL theories, theories that uh, you know, may not um, be intended to really describe reality, but help us understand quantum theory and classical, uh, and when I say classical theory, I really mean classical probability theory, not symplectic analytics necessarily. Um, understand these things um, by understanding in part what they could have been but are not. Um, and in particular, this project has some understanding in terms of the flow and processing of information in, within different types of theories. Uh, the motivations, of course, there's some pragmatic ones to help us um, conceptually understand information processing and thereby maybe developing protocols or model information in other complex or concurrent systems. And then there's the hubristic ones about you know, maybe really just the right way to see physics and it will help us, uh, at least quantum physics, and it will help us with the way forward. Quantum theory's founders recognized that um, there was sort of an informational break being made in classical physics. The basic ideas that disturbed them had a lot to do with information. So the idea that measurement disturbs the state, that is associated with um, uh, the gathering of information necessarily causing disturbance. Schrodinger's description of entanglement, where he said the best possible knowledge of the total system, not necessarily the total knowledge of all its parts, even when these are fully separated from each other. Um, you know, the way I would understand that is just to say, in quantum theory, even if a composite system is in a pure state, the marginal systems can be in mixed states. Um, okay, so there may be many different illuminating characterizations and axiomatizations. In fact, I expect there will be of quantum theory in terms of um, information. Uh, Hardy has a nice uh, sort of partial axiomatization. Dariano's done some work on this. Uh, various other uh, Iraqi and his article, Quantum Logic. Uh, I'll say no more about those. Um, well, here's a property that Schrodinger found particularly uh, weird about quantum theory. And it's the fact that if you control one component of an entangled state, you can steer the other component into any statistical ensemble for its most <coughs> marginal state just by choosing to measure a suitable observable. Uh, so he was thinking about EPR, I think, and um, you know, the choice of whether I measure position or momentum um, is going to uh, determine whether the states conditional on those measurement outcomes are position eigenstates or momentum eigenstates um, at the, you know, of the other part. Um, and so for those who weren't there here yesterday, a very quick review of the operational formalism that's brought up in quantum theory. Systems, they each have a convex set of states. Uh, there's a convex set of measurement outcomes. These, me these measurement outcomes um, are basically linear functionals on the state space. Um, these convex sets are embedded as a base of a cone of unnormalized states. So we actually look at all non negative multiples of a normalized state, and that's our cone of unnormalized states. Uh, and then we describe a measurement as a set of these outcomes that add up to the unit outcome. What's the unit outcome? It's the one that gives one whenever you measure it on any normalized state. It gives you no information. Uh, but mathematically, it needs to be one. Okay. And then we describe a convex set of allowable dynamics. They can't take you out of the state space because you have to always be able to interpret um, um, the thing that results from this dynamics as still being a state. It gives you good um, probabilities. Uh, and we describe ways of making composite systems. And you can even get category theoretic about it. Um, so I think I will summarize the main results uh, that my collaborators and I have obtained in this framework. Um, okay, so I'll assume that 
that's more or less understood the convex framework from um, the last few days. Um, and I'll say a little bit more about what these terms are for those of you who aren't, uh, who weren't there, weren't there for the school. Um, so if we want to look at steering, and it's going to relate to some concepts that are natural about the convex structure of this state space. And one of them is the self-duality or lack thereof. Maximal 
that your product just has only unentangled effects and therefore any state that's positive on those. And the minimal tensor product is sort of the opposite. It has only unintended states, and therefore you could allow any uh, bipartite measured outcome that's positive on the product states. Okay. We say, just as a quantum theory, that a state is entangled if it can't be written as a convex combination of product states. It's perfectly general. All right, steering of ensembles, the main topic of the talk. Um, so we'll call a normalized ensemble for a state of mega. It's just convex decomposition with probabilities pi uh, and states mega i of the state into normalized states. So these sum i pi mega i has to be four mega. It's more convenient to include the normalization with the omegas and just say that an ensemble um, is actually just a set of states um, that add up to that state. And here the states don't have to be normalized, they'll necessarily be. So it's a fact that for any bipartite state, omega AB, and any measurement f sub i, the conditional states, omega B, f sub i, are an ensemble with the marginal states. Um, these are the states induced on B after you've gotten the measurement outcome f sub i on A. And you don't renormalize here so that the, um, these things are subnormalized and then the norm is the probability, which is nice. Okay, and then we say a state is steering for its marginal, omega B, if every ensemble omega sub i for omega b, there exists an observable f sub i. So these things add up to the unit on a, and they're legitimate effects, we call these measurement outcomes, linear functionals that take states to the probability of this f sub i in that state. Um, there exists an observable such that the state's conditional on its outcomes are an ensemble for, are this particular ensemble for omega b. In other words, any ensemble you can think of for the state if omega AB is steering, you can make that ensemble as the conditional state by choosing your observable right. Okay. Um, so Schrodinger thought it was weird that you could steer at all in quantum mechanics. Um, and in fact, quantum mechanics has you know, the property that not just are there alternative ensembles you can steer to, but in fact, any ensemble you can think of for, for a marginal state, you can find an entangled state that will steer to that marginal. And in fact, a single entangled state that will steer to any ensemble you want for the marginal state. Um, so what kind of constraints does this impose on the structure of theories? How unique of a property is this? Uh, how unique of a quantum mechanic? Um, okay, well, quantum mechanics has the interesting, um, interesting property that it has a lot of what I like to call isomorphism states. Should have been defined at some point, but let me say where it is. Where's the chalk? So, for any state, omega AB, we associate a map, which I like to call omega hat, and it goes from A star to B, and it's just the conditioning map. It says, right, I mean, omega B is a map to the reals, and you put in states, you put in effects maybe E and maybe A and B here. Um, and then there's a map that takes the effect A, who's sticking here, which belongs in A star, to the conditional state. In other words, the um, map from effects here to the reals that you get when you've already evaluated at A here. So does that, does that make some sense? Um, now, if this weren't A star, this would be a lot like Choi Jamil Kalski had this morning. In quantum mechanics, we don't have to have A star because A and A star are the same if you represent them in this um, way that shows their strong self duality. Here we need the A star. Um, so, any state has associated a map like this, uh, and of course, any effect also does too, and this will go from A to B star. Okay, so when this when a bipartite state is such that this map is an isomorphism, that's what I mean by an isomorphism state. And full Schmidt rank states in quantum mechanics, entangled states, are isomorphism states in this sense. Um, so the existence of lots of isomorphism states in the theory is a, I think, very special property in quantum mechanics. Um, 
And so we'd like to find sort of information theoretic properties, operational properties, tasks that are related to having a lot of isomorphism states. Well, here's a relationship between having them and having steering. If we have such a state, it's steering for its right margin. Um, and I guess I won't discuss the um, relation to bit commitment too much. Um, early in the history of quantum theory, though, of uh, uh, quantum information theory, people wondered if the non-uniqueness of ensembles for a state on some of the compositions of the state could be used for bit commitment. So Alice would um, you know, encode a bit 0 or 1 in which ensemble she chose for state omega. Um, she would sample from the ensemble, send the result to Bob. Uh, Bob, of course, wouldn't know which, you know, what value of her coin flip she'd got. Uh, so he'd see the same state no matter which ensemble she used. But the idea was she's supposed to be able to prove to him which ensemble she used later by uh, saying which state she actually got in the sample. And if you do this a lot of times, you can kind of check that she's not lying. Uh, so it looked like she could commit to this bit, this choice of ensemble. But you can defeat that with entangled states by basically, instead of sending a sample, send half an entangled state, and then steer to whatever ensemble you want and measure. Uh, so there's a connection to bit over here, but I won't go into um, more. Um, okay. So it might even be worth proving this. Uh, if omega is a state such that um, this is an isomorphism, slightly more generally to the face generated by omega b. So this may not be the entire b system. B might be a larger system than a. Uh, but even in this case, um, an isomorphism on the face is steering for the margin, which lies in that face. Um, okay, this proof is almost trivial, but I think in the time constraints, I won't go through it. I'll leave it as an exercise. Very simple. Let me start relating these notions of steering and the related notion of isomorphism state to um, homogeneity with the view of hopefully ultimately hooking up with this kosher thinker uh, theorem uh, that gets us close to quantum. Uh, so the following things are equivalent A being homogeneous and every in normalized state in the interior of A state cone being the marginal of an isomorphism state. Okay, 
so a few more observations about steering. Um, if we take any state on A and a pure state on B, then obviously um, alpha tends to be beta can, can steer the margin. Because the margin of pure, there's no more trivial ensembles. Um, but if, if this is actually a mixed state, of course, you can't steer backwards uh, from beta to A. On any pure product state is steering, any isomorphism state. Uh, you might start wondering whether states that steer in both directions are only pure. That's not true, because classical bipartite states that have perfect correlation between the marginals are steering in both directions. So an open question, uh, if it's bi-steering, it's steering in both directions, and um, the local systems are irreducible, so there's no classicality in there. Um, right, the classical thing is just a direct sum, one dimension. If there's no reducibility to, and by steering, do we have a pure state? Um, okay. A little lemon here, maybe not that illuminating, but um, if you do have a state that's steering, uh, steering at its B marginal, then um, the image of the whole cone under the associated map is the face generated by the B marginal. Um, but that's not a sufficient condition. Uh, we have an order theoretic necessary and sufficient condition. Um, right. So we have the notion that for partially ordered sets, uh, we have an order preserving map from one set actually onto the other. It's a quotient map. If um, you know, for everything, every ordered pair in the image, there's a pre-image uh, ordered in the same way. A pair of pre-images ordered in the same way. And then there's a strong quotient. Not only for every pair, but for every chain in the image, we can find a chain of pre images. And that's properly strong. So the theorem is if omega is a bipartite state in some composite AB, then it's steering for its B marginal if and only if uh, this associated map takes the unit interval, which is the set of legitimate effects, right? The interval between zero and this ordered unit, which would be the identity matrix takes it to the interval between zero and the marginal state. Um, and that map has to be a strong quotient map. Um, all right. So a corollary is that if a map is steering for its marginal, the marginal is the interior of its cone. So it's like a full Schmidt rank. And this associated map is injected, then omega hat actually does have to be in order isomorphism in that pure. Um, so we're looking for conditions. We'd like to have a lot of um, pure states, pure purification. Pure, pure um, okay, let's relate steering to and homogeneity to um, steering and homogeneity and weak self -level. So we say that theory supports universal steering for every system B in the theory and every state beta. In D, there's a system A sub beta and a bipartite state omega and A sub beta to B that steers the B marginal. Um, in other words, it steers for that state beta. And then we say it's uniform if you can always pick this system, the same system, independent of beta. You know, quantum theory has that property. Um, and then we say universal self-steering if for every system in the theory um, we can actually pick this A. So beta, not only to be independent of beta, but actually to be um, a system isomorphic to be. Um, okay, so in any theory that supports universal uniform steering, every irreducible bidimensional state space is homogeneous. Um, that basically um, uses that, that statement about isomorphism states from earlier. And if additional, additionally required to be self-steering, we get homogeneity and weak self-duality. So we're getting quite, you know, getting a bit closer to quantum theory. Okay. Um, so just to situate these results um, in a little bit more general context, some general conclusions from this overall program, which I've been involved with along with lots of collaborators, there are a lot of things that are sort of generically non-classical, no cloning, no broadcasting, information disturbance relations. Even entanglement, if you use anything other than the minimal uh, coupling. Single fit, only one way of moving out the tank. Um, um, yesterday, I noted that.
inclusive teleportation requires something close to weak self duality. Okay, actually, that's only true if you require teleportation, for example, through a copy of the system itself. It's a similar situation to what we have here. You get the weak self duality by requiring that the um, you know, the task you're talking about should be carried out not just with some other system, but with another copy of the system. Yesterday we saw that if you have a lot of symmetry, in this case it was transitive action on the extremal points, which is different from transitive action on the interior, which is on the day. Uh, but it sounds kind of the same flavor. You could get deterministic teleportation. Okay, you have to have a GF programming state as well. Um, all right, and then the result we just got about steering. Um, so for steering in particular, um, well, if we could additionally motivate a strong self duality. Um, you know, we have these formerly real Jordan actors. We'd be close to quantum theory. Um, now, if we additionally impose local tomography, so bipartite states are determined by the probabilities they assign the product of that, we get further restrictions. Um, and so here's a little bit more about that, and then that will be the last, last thing I'll say. Um, so, a theorem of Hansha Olson says that any JV algebra whose vector space has a product with basically a qubit, a self adjoint part of uh, two by two complex matrices. Can be made into a JD tensor product. So the vector space tensor product can be made into a uh, Jordan Bach algebra tensor product. It's the self adjoint part of the complex <coughs> algebra. And these Jordan Bach algebras are, um, in finite dimensions, they're going to be closely related to these uh, uh, formally real Jordan algebras. Um, probably the same thing, but I'm not worried about any tells. Um, okay. But there are requirements for a JD tensor product. Look at the cones associated with these algebras, and they're basically just cones of squares of elements in the algebras, right? Positive semi-definite matrices are squares of Hermitian matrices, and so forth for the other other uh, Jordan algebras. Um, so the operational requirement, these these JE requirements, if you look at what happens with the cone, what they impose on cones, it's basically our requirements on homogeneous state spaces. So if you have, if you want a homogeneous self dual state space, you have a locally tomographic homogeneous self dual composite with a qubit state space, i.e. a 3D ball, and you want 